Okay, yeah, again, I, I don't have any fixed agenda. The idea of this talk began in the earlier years is to uh, discuss any hot topics that people would like to discuss. My job is, I guess, to moderate that. <laughs> And, well, I have a few items actually that I will bring up, I want to bring up myself. And I will just start with them if nobody else has any pressing things. Um, so we have in GCC support for Intel mic offloading. What are we going to do with that? <laughs> That's not been building for several months now in the trunk and also in I think the GCC9 branch also is broken. HJ Lu has submitted a simple fix to change some link order things and then it works again. But apparently well, it no, compiles again, right? It, it compiles again. Yeah. And, uh, and, and there is this mode of, of emulated info mic offloading, which I include in my testing. And I, But I guess given that nobody else has complained about this being broken for months, uh, nobody is using that. Well, I would personally think that the emulation mode is, is the only interesting thing for us, actually. Yeah. Because, at least from, from what I understood, hardware wise, basically the cards uh, which, which are not supporting the KMC or what, what was it? Nice uh, uh, We're actually telling for, for this uh, offloading module. But the KMLs, which we actually support, are only sold as, as complete hardware. The, the chip chip is the CPU. Mm -hmm. And so the only way to use the offloading is to use some, some kind of networking over which you communicate with the server. And I'm not sure if anybody actually... Probably the labs have some hardware like that, but... Kind of difficult to test. Yeah, so my question is if, should we keep that in GCC or remove that? I mean, I, I don't care very much, but if it's broken for months and nobody knows. Well, well, the offloading, uh, well, the emulation mode was kind of nice if you went when I had to debug something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for, for debugging, it was much nicer than debugging and VTX offloading because. At least well, the you bring that debugging there or, yeah. or nothing. <laughs> and in this case, you could add a GBB to the, to the other process and to the other process. Yeah, but that's. I, I admit, so, as a debugging tool, okay, nice thing, but does it have to be in the mix specific then? I mean, we could just, you know, yeah, it, we, it, we it, could it, some the fake offload yeah. target that would be yeah. only emulated for debugging purposes, yeah. right? I mean, isn't it ready here that the answer to your question should be ready here? It was broken since many months and nobody. <coughs> so it's obviously. I, I would, in principle, like to keep it. Because because of the solo. It, 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 I would like to keep it because it's the only implementation of this feature um, in a way for OpenM12 that is MVPTX offloading, but the Intel Mic is special in the way that it deals with the same architecture. Yeah. In a way. Um, yeah, so that was an open question if we keep it or yeah, And the problem is that it supports some features the PTX does not support, yeah. actually. Yeah. Like for for instance, OpenMP, for OpenMP, the link clause mm -hmm. in the declarator jet is actually not supported in the PTX. Okay. Yeah, but still, I mean, if it doesn't build, then nobody, nobody. Obviously, you didn't care either, for instance, even though it's well, uh, the bugging tool. Usually, so. I am just too, too lazy to, to set up this kind of building, so, so I usually just, just build without offloading and, and write support. And, and, and once a year or twice a year, you actually build with offloading support and test it. But not any, I'm not doing it every day. Because it's I mean, it's not. Uh, problem in terms of maintenance or whatever to keep it in tree. Um, there are not many changes in the interfaces relevant there. So I, no, 
Yeah. I'm happy to keep it and commit that. Yes. We, we, we can yeah. make sense. I, I, I don't again understand the opportunity to do this. I don't understand the patch or, yeah. And if you have uh, the GCN uploading this year or next year, we can. Better coverage. Okay. Then basically keep it as long as it doesn't cause any big efforts to keep it right. And the other thing is the HSA offloading model that we had. So that's down here. The uh, compilation flow that we have this LTO offloading model and the HSA IO model. Are we recording the session? Yes. No. Um, I'm going to say it anyway. I, I do not. Yeah, I think I'm afraid that most people have sort of abundant HSA mm -hmm. IL. Sometimes I suspect that the only machine that can still run it. Runs it every Tuesday is in our bathroom server. <laughs> um, so I want to have one in my <laughs> Can it switch off the space? Switch off set up that it can no. finalize the thing and run it. Um, no. No. Um, and there are two components to this. One is uh, yeah, this HSA HSA IL. Model, which I don't really believe is problematic. It's uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it's basically streaming out another intermediate language. That that's the thing that I would like to keep. However, what has to change is the critification stuff. That's just for the broken for the broken by the 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 open up the expansion preparation. That 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 was yeah. I mean I'm. I'm I didn't have time, and I didn't manage to basically study properly how the OpenMP got involved and the um, design is broken and needs to be removed. The thing is that I don't have anything that would feed HSAIL, uh, and, and which, yeah, I still would not like to kill it, even though it eventually may that may happen. I think it still might be useful, especially if. Uh, if distributions ever decide that we would like to ship some kind of code in this intermediate language for accelerators, and this is the, the standard one that you know have. It's, it's not a proprietary one, it's, it's described. We could hijack it if we wanted to. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would not like to uh, yeah, get rid of it until it's absolutely necessary. But at the same time, it's, <laughs> it's uh, not, it's unlikely to be high priority. Of course, I have to fix the open MP thing. Uh, one, one, one problem I see is that as, as I'm adding new features for open MP5, yeah. like uh, new clauses and new flags on, on the clauses, then uh, the, I, I have to talk to the HSAIL you code doesn't really no, check those and it can't. just Generates something without without yeah, it. basically like the last and, and, and condition okay. is not supported for me. No, no. So, no what, what what I need to do is basically the thing is that if I can do it quickly enough, uh, and I may ask for help uh, where to look for the NVIDIA uploading, where we're going to be converted to the vectors, mm -hmm. just try and do that very quickly. And even if I can just you know just get something working or something and then kind of leave it in that state, which will it should not. And it should at least not cause problems for anyone. And of course, then I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe no one will ever need HSA. But at the same time, I think that the ISAs are still evolving. That they, they every one of them is still a little bit different. So they're not really ready for wider distribution. So we, we may want way more. I, I don't want to new the back end yet. Yeah, that that's mostly robust. It's mm -hmm. really open. -ended. And yeah, apparently I have to, I, I guess I have to refer to that. Onza approved the IPS array as the one big router on my back, and now that's probably the, 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 
the next thing that I need to fix that I have finished <laughs> into Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I think I have an answer to the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, I think the HSA model in terms of uploading, it shouldn't be really. Uh, I'm not saying that other people want to follow it, but for an intermediate language, mm. I think that it works really well. I don't think it prompts anything really to go. No. And then you just both of them can go into it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And again, my question was not to actively propose to remove it, but to get an idea of what's happening there, uh, if anything. <laughs> that definitely is not causing any problems. And if, uh, you said that distributions could use that to, as in, to basically package offloading code in a generic form. I think that basically we don't have front end for it, right? So yeah. we could take. HSAIL and uh, finalize it for MDGTF no. and for MDGC. That, that could be, well, they are very informing. <laughs> that would be tough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe for a very small, <laughs> a very small way, way uh, not very long, this is way far. Um, uh, but that, that's what, that's, what I believe was its original intention. And uh, yeah, the problem is the market demand right now for HSA is non existent. And, and also, the, the initial push ups and players on the front are not pushing HSA anymore. So, yeah, it's, it's really, really, it's really, it's really, really a problem of, of uh, motivation. And of course, other things that. Uh, also, should be done and are probably much more useful. True. And I mean, the advantage of such a uh, not hardware specific intermediate language we have seen earlier in the AMD GCN uh, presentation, I think how can I get it that the AMD GCN backend is really tied to one specific hardware architecture. And if you want to support three cards, you have to. Um, build a fat binary containing three versions of, of uh, AMD GCM technology. And there are, of course, such a thing as HSAIL, which is much better than a runtime finalizer. Yeah, but that's something that you don't want to deal with in, on, on a supercomputer, but yeah, it would be. But it's, it would be a good default one, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, somebody wouldn't have to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just curious. Otherwise, any topics? Uh, one topic uh, that recently came up in the Open Language Committee is that, unfortunately, uh, LLVM and perhaps, I don't know what exactly Intel compilers do than others, but definitely LLVM uses kind of different uh, offloading module from, from what we use. Uh, they actually compile the source many times, once for a host and once for each offloading target. And so far that's, that's not a problem, do it either way because the standard did, did not uh, require anything special. But there are some groups in OpenMP now trying to push features into the standard, which basically requires that LLVM module is the only true, truly right module. Okay, can you make an example? Uh, well, the features they are basically requesting is well, right now you have one source and you compile that single source for the host and, and the offloading compilers. And they want to be able to specialize the code. Like mm -hmm. have a special version for host that, that's fine. You know, our module as well, basically we say the routine will stay on the host only. And, and then you can use like x86 uh, internet six and, and stuff like that and, and make the code faster there. Uh, the problem problem is as soon as our, as you are using stuff like uh, inline assembly for 
ATX or, or a GCN or something. Yeah. And in the module we have, which uh, I know uh, I've pushed for, for GCC as, as it makes more sense for, for me because you have a single source and, and sometimes you even don't have uh, this, the, the source is coming from pipe or something and you just can't easily replicate it without actually storing it in, into some file and then running the compiler many times. Yeah. Uh, the problem is yeah, that in some cases, yeah, uh, if they want to push some features into the standard that basically says that this part of code won't be even parsed for the host and will be parsed just for the offloading device, then at that point, I don't see how you can actually implement it without without parsing it many times. And, and because LLVM does it this way, and I think that's that's a bad way because in that case you don't have a single source, but you, you the user can give you multiple sources which are completely different. They may come from the same uh, original source, but they can use preprocessor macros to include something else, and, and the code can be completely different. The structures don't have to match. And, and, yeah, and there is no way to have anything to do with our model as far as our physical. You can, can generate for one off target code, right? But well, that's all the code generation part. Uh, I don't see when, when you are talking basically about parsing problem, right? About parsing problem. Well, it could be a problem for us if it, if the expectation was that we could use built-ins for the upload target that we don't. Yeah, have. yeah one, one thing is built-ins. Another is is inline assembly. That's for for inline assembly, line. assembly, we could use some hook that this code is for something else. Don't check it and and do something until until post uh, until procedural optimizations. But as soon as, as you write completely invalid uh, code. For, for, for the other target that just you can parse because it's not valid, then at that, at that point it could be difficult. So what exists? And, and I am trying to push hard against this uh, in, in the committee, but I don't know how how it will play out at the end. What exists in OpenACC is this ACC on device. Um, you, you, we have OMP on device as well, yeah. and, and in OpenMP5, we actually have the meta directive and declare, declare variant. Declare variant is, is basically some attribute, it's, it's actually a fragment, it could be an attribute on a function where, where you say if the context, if you are calling it on this architecture and your vendor is GNU and and, and something and something and it's in inside of a Perl for then you can change this call to this specialized call which will be better for, for, for this kind of stuff. That's that's easy. And the meta directive is basically you say that uh, you write a pragma which says if you are in this context and on this device and this vendor and, and so on. Then you, uh, it's this kind of directive. Otherwise, it's another directive. So you can use in some place of distribute uh, parallel for CG, and in other case, use a loop directive, and in other case, something else. Yeah. The requirement is just that all those directives have to have to generate valid code. And that's that's still possible and still implementable, but as soon as, as they are trying to now push the begin and end marks for code, that if you are in this context, then basically don't parse anything in yeah. between here. And they mean it for something like uh, map headers. All right. Uh, uh, well, we actually have a problem, and we, we don't have a solution for that right now. Is for instance the GLIPC finite. In wrappers, yeah. where we could, in theory, add those wrappers to the new lib libraries, where they would be just aliases to normal attributes or something similar. But they may basically want to, to have the ability in their code to say, say that if you are on the host, use the 
his routines and otherwise use something completely else. And, and because they have uh, CUDA as, as an offloading target rather than PTX, then they basically want to write CUDA code inside their hacker directly. Yeah, because what you can use this for, and that's in the description here, if you have, um, if the ACC on device routine has a compile time constant argument, if the MBA if evaluates a compile time to constant, and that means you can have if ACC on device and media, and then you can have a block containing an SM user. Well, we, we have test cases like this in, in the open ACC yeah. test suite already where you have the, the PTX inline assembly right. and uh, it only works if, if the code is compiled with O2 because for O0 we actually don't optimize it out. Uh, no, we do, <laughs> we do nowadays. Okay. Yeah. But that's of course, that's but, one but, thing. But, but in the inactive parts, rather by this uh, um, predicate, it still has to be valid C or C++. It has right? to be valid, but it will not be compiled to assembly for, for that part. Sure. So you can have whatever stuff sure. in there and the assembly has to but, be but, but, what, but he's so talking so about I basically will, is where, where the parts that are added are, are, are arguing that it should be valid C code and, and say hello inline assembly in there and, and we can just handle it somehow or on calling other functions which which will be just proved by them not actually defined in the code. That's, that's fine too. But yeah, I mean, so arbitrarily tokens in the code which don't yeah, make sense. It has to remain valid, of course, but nothing else makes sense. Yeah, well, they use the preprocessor too. Yeah. And, and, and the thing about their, the LLVM module is, is, is even more difficult because basically they have to compile it for the offloading target, but using Say x86 uh, ABM layout of all the structures mm -hmm. or power PC or so. So basically, that's something getting very hard in GCC where you would need to have uh, to split target M hooks into the API hooks and others and then be able to, to use from this target these hooks. Interesting. Continue to, to argue against it. <laughs> yeah. Because otherwise we have no, no other choice than to hook somewhere in the, into the parsers and just mm -hmm. remember the token stream and mm -hmm. then if it eventually turns out to be on the device that is the one that we need, then, then you have to compile it. Well, you just discard even it. The, the meta directly will be difficult to actually do because I think we will probably need to parse it many times for, for each variant. Mm -hmm. And just do some if internal function, then this block or, or this block or this block, and, and then decide somewhere else in open and lowering or later when we actually can resolve or latest and doing IPA. Uh, That's actually, when we can that was my question. Context. What type of conditionals are allowed in this? Well, the context can be, for instance, that the device is, and, and you say what well, the device is, and the device can be MBPTX. So you can decide it only when, when you know I'm the offloading target for this and, and it's this kind. Or, or it can be context of in which uh, OpenMP constructs you are in or in which routine. Yeah, well, but that's all statically <coughs> at the point where the condition is written down in the source code, you can resolve. No, no, no. Uh, well, some of the contexts you can resolve immediately. Yeah. Others you can resolve after parsing the whole translation unit, <coughs> others you can resolve only after or only during vectorization action. Mm -hmm. That's the most difficult part. That's true. <laughs> because uh, you can write the CMT clauses actually for declare CMT inside us as a, mm -hmm. as a property. And so you can say, call this extra function instead of this function if you are in vectorized loop and this variable is linear and this variable is uniform and this variable is a vector mm -hmm. and the scintillant decided is 80. Mm -hmm. So vectorization factor yeah. in, in GCC. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually started working on this. I, I have parsing done, but the other parts will be different. <laughs>
And, and the thing, the problem trying to push against is they would, uh, then there were some people who just weren't understanding that somebody could implement it in a different way than the LLVMS. I think that's, yeah, a little bit of a problem because it seems that a lot of uh, vendors have started using the, yeah, this uploading, uh, well, this uploading model and then the, even the same library, which I think is originally in Chaos Library. I don't know if it, now it's well, well, the LLVM. Well, they have usually multiple libraries. They, they have one, one OpenMP library, which actually doesn't do uploading at all. all right. that's, that they use the Intel library, but some public branch of that, and Intel has some private branch which has yeah, other features it's a that it's people pushing. And then they have offloading library which is separate, and I don't know how it can actually work because <laughs> it's so, so tied to the OpenMP that yeah, I, it, I, it I, makes I, no sense to me to sure. split it up as a separate library. But I do, true. and it's just probably started as two versions. Now, what I wanted to say that people from IBM pray that they basically. Yeah, so well, but working. it's it's all again so everybody forks and, and have their own code. You know. I think I, IBM has some sort of separate mm. runtime library which uses all for something. For us, maybe there could be some advantages to switching to Intel library, but well, the, the, they have they have some advantages in, in the threading module and, and so on. But on the other side, you would actually have to change everything we have implemented. And we couldn't decide on, on the features how, how we actually want to implement yeah. them. But then they have implemented stuff like open D and T already, which is right. a lot of work and some they will have to be. Well, and the other thing maybe graphite or LLVM's poly. I don't know a lot about that, um, but it seems that all development has moved from graphite to LLVM. Uh, does anybody here have any experience with both of them? Only well, so far that I read the poly code mm -hmm. and because I wanted to do something with graphite, which I don't remember anymore. Um, it's, it's fairly similar. I think it's basically it's the same thing. Well, there, there's a huge library which, which does, yeah. does it, and, and Graphite and Poly are just the interfacing of the connection between the compiler and the All right, ah, right. And I, I know what, what I wanted to do. I wanted to uh, use ISL in a more optimal fashion than, than Graphite is doing now. I wanted to look at what Poly is doing to drive ISL in, in, in the ways I want to do that. Uh, because all the heavy lifting is done in the bias set. Mm -hmm. And therefore, graphite and poly are otherwise fairly similar. So they, they need to detect the scopes. And then they do an initial schedule to let ISL do the magic mm -hmm. with tweakings and then uh, modify, the, modify the schedule the back again and then uh, they create code. And so it's really relatively similar. Mm -hmm. I, I wondered because I had seen some research papers um, about delinearization, for example, and stuff like that, which was implemented for poly. Yeah. And I wondered how difficult it would be to port that over to graphite, or if we could actually use the poly code in some way if that makes sense. I don't know, because it's mostly interface, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, uh, actually poly, meanwhile, because it is seen more, more uh, active development, it's has implemented some features that graphite simply doesn't. Yeah. For instance, also for 
code for, for fully physical, you know, generating code for, for members as well. Yeah, members as well. Uh, there, and that part of these codes could just be real implemented in profile as well. I'm not so sure about really reusing their source code because it's all embedded within LVM, okay. so it uses LVM yeah, actually, facilities can, can to generate to iterate over instructions and so on and so on. So I don't see that. Mm -hmm. It's probably easier to just rewrite or you know, rewrite it in, in the GCC but terms. Fortunately, we have only a couple of um, loop passes which, which are not graphite. Hmm? Fortunately, we have a couple of loop, loop optimizations which are graphite based. No. Okay. 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 But there is no general tendency to make more use stuff in GCC. Not right now. Well, I, it's, it's I would have liked to, uh, the, the, well, I would have for somebody else to have, I would have liked to for somebody else to do something like <laughs> that. So, but uh, because it simply makes more sense, uh, yeah. it, it generates more, it, it can deal with more situations than, than our classic formulation of the loop transforms. But, yeah. but there are many bugs and only uh, Richie is uh, actually, actually are not, are, are not that many bugs anymore. Richie has fixed a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Richie yeah. yeah. fixed yeah. most of the, of the correctness bugs. Yeah. Well, well, actually, I, I, I think all of them, but yeah. you never know. <laughs> um, I, I always, I'm ignoring all, all side bugs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry for that. No, so that's okay. okay. Um, the thing is, as I said, most of the heavy lifting is done in the ISL. We can't really do anything much in Graphite itself uh, to <coughs> implement any specific loop transforms. So build the initial schedule and then ISL does magic <laughs> and gets you back a different schedule, uh, which you just have to generate code for. You know, and, uh, but you can't really treat that that much. So it, it might, for instance, be that with ISL comes up with a, with a faster but much bigger schedule, for instance, that, that has like Originally, it was like a one loop with, with, a, with a body that contains many conditionals, and out comes uh, a function which has 1,000 loops <laughs> for all the different conditions, right? So um, that, that's hard to control yeah. somewhat. Which, so you get it basically at the mercy of whatever device is. Uh, of course, so, so we could change the by yourself. <laughs> that would be another project, of course. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the first step is to feed as much information to the ISL that we can gather. Yeah. yeah. So it's to be of the context of the target uh, cost of instructions and stuff. Like exactly. That. Uh, yeah, but somebody needs to invest the work. And I don't think it's much work. So, so the, the current schedule, uh, especially the current dependence information that, that we are giving to the ISL is fairly very constrained so that ISL uh, doesn't have very many opportunities to improve the, 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 the initial schedule. And that should be basically rectified. And then the ISL will do, usually it will do the right thing uh, with your new nests. It's not as bad as the old tree linear code. No, it's not at all. Yeah, for the common cases it worked nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything else was <laughs> all the right all the <laughs> corner cases were wrong. Yeah. And of course there's always the problem that this tends to be slow. Yeah. The the device L, the integer programming optimization is simply slow. It's much better than anything else that is from, from the fully detailed world, but it still remains the case that that our classic passes, that do unswitching, unwell jam, all, all of it, these little passes that only work with uh, type nests are simply much, much faster than, than doing the same. So, so just ISO already have the even counter? Or yes. We are using it, but if, if, if all loop nests actually go up to that limit, then you end up with okay, I'm, I'm making it up, making up the number, but it's like twice as slow as the population falls. Uh, 
it's, it's really noticeable. Of course, you could lower the limit then again, right? But then the other guy says, not doing it much very you want, so. You can make it gradual use. Oh, if, you, if you see many loops. So there, are, there are different ways you can, you can actually uh, give a more constrained uh, input schedule to the ISL, and then it is quicker to come up with a solution than if it is the identity, the, 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 the identity transform. Uh, because more constraints means less, less work for the constraints or not. But, uh, then you have to think about what, what kinds of constraints you want to give it. I still think it's the future. Uh, it should be the future, but, but uh, even, even I'm working on the classic transforms and not the top. So, mm. and if graphite is enabled, the classic transforms will be discovered in Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's just another pass that runs in addition <laughs> to everything. Uh, we'll try to not interfere with each other. Yeah. Well, we have a way to stick some flags in, in the loop structure. <laughs> could, most could easier it could be easier to do. We should start doing that. Um, yeah. Like, sure. if we know this is a block of some, a block loop of something, then exactly. uh, we, we, are, we are not, we are not, not even doing that, and that would be a much lower hanging fruit. Yeah. Uh, although, sometimes we, we do it now. Although if you look loops simply because we annotate the number of iterations and uh, that just don't transform much with the number is too, too small. Uh, yeah. You should make some people work on the fight stuff. We have enough. I'm busy. No, no, and you know, you know, you know, you have enough make, make 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 <laughs> <laughs> If you find us a customer, yeah. uh, uh, for OpenMP Flight 1, I think that there are some people trying to push pragmas for the various loop optimizations like ASQ, Unknown uh, Loop, or uh, you. It's the target 5.1. I thought it was for 6.0, but it's true that they're working Maybe. on it like really. I'm not sure about the. Then there were several conferences about that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, no, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's actually quite probable because they are quite focusing on it. So, yeah, but they, they will be annotating loops with all the transformations. It, it wasn't even clear to me whether it, the pragmas just said asking the compiler to try to do this optimization or saying it's possible to. Transform because that's very different. In that case, you could skip all the all the checking whether whether the transformation is yeah. possible and using yeah. saying it's it possible to transform this, this way. I, I, I understood that the intent was yeah, it's possible and you should do it. Uh, that's easy yeah. for us. You can transforms are easy to implement. <laughs> it's it's the dependency checks without information that you can't do. <laughs> Five one is, is supposed to be very small readings, but as, <laughs> as I see it, it's going to take another three years to <laughs> only two hundred pages. Not doubling the size. Well, five more, five zero was basically doubling the size. Yeah. <laughs> well, part of uh, that being due to the appendix. Well, the appendix is gone. <laughs> you know the appendix <laughs> was wrong with well, the, I think the only appendix left is, is the history or something. Uh -huh. But most of the appendix is yeah, nurse is this, this, uh, the other So that's not append appendix, oh, that's yeah. the integral part. That's, yeah, that's, that's why I double size because they integrate all the appendix. <laughs> 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 Okay, and I mean the, the topic about uh, switching of their, uh, build configurations for packagers, distributors, that seems to be working, or at least Matthias Stoko has built the Debian Ubuntu GCC with MVPDX offloading method. It was just copied from. Copied from, 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 from Red Hat, yeah. copied from Right now we do just PTX offloading and nothing else. 
Yeah. Maybe as well. If, if, if GCN works eventually, uh, yeah. like as well. Yeah. But yeah, like like for PTX, I would like to be able to build GCC for the distribution without having any proprietary or or even as as much, as, as, as few dependencies in the tree as as, as possible. Well, yeah. well, proprietary is, is not possible to have in the tree, in, in the build server, and, and the rest is, yeah, if, if I can avoid it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was all reasoning for disabling all the offloading for many, many reasons. Mm -hmm. I think that the, the, that the runtime plugin for GCN is mm -hmm. basically also derived from the page of SSA, okay. so that, that they can yeah, dynamically load it. It's not proprietary, it's all open source, but, uh, and, and when you asked uh, the lighting code, I believe that, yeah, our kernels, recent kernels should run. Well, if, if it's yeah. a small package, I need to include in the GCC for the tree, or, no, or, 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 or have it's it. another package I require, it's best possible. No. So I mean, the, the thing with, with GCN is that you need the LLVM from chain for the SM yeah, that's, that's, not that's, 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 that's a fawn on our side. Or somebody else are going to do support. Or the new builds, but there's nothing else. That's the current state of the things. I don't have cycles to write it by cycles. So, so one, one thing I would be interested in, uh, a package which uses the offloading, which can be uploaded to a distro too, just to show people how to use that. Well, yeah, that's, that's as I said, for, for GCN, the, that's really the ISA of the, C, of the GPU, and it varies a little bit in, in small but important ways in between the various versions of the GPUs. So you know, it could be really hardware specific. Uh, and the BTX, I don't know if the distributions of course the free software want to include that in their packages. Well, the package would include generic OpenACC or OpenIP offloading. That's what he's asking for. Well, that yeah, RPM would compile. Well, the binary would include PTX and it would have to include or, or GCN. I guess yeah. that, that doesn't hurt. I don't know. Yeah, well, but still, of course, an example package uh, that, that shows off the capabilities. Offloading hell world. Something. <laughs> Offloading hell world. <laughs> So I had the idea that maybe a new opaque method replacement would be a suitable place for whatever metrics multiplication or whatever. I don't know what they're currently doing if they're calling into some specific libraries yeah. if they're available. But it could be a place to show how to do this and stuff. So nobody has, has any ideas of existing Packages using OpenACC or OpenMP target offloading. <laughs> Doesn't seem so <laughs> interesting. That's well, class on it. It, 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 it would be something that doesn't take too long. It would be nice to include it in GCC as well. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you can just write a matrix multiplication and then. then yeah. Uh, well, we have some sample of something. Like so. If you can put a, a Bitcoin uh, a Bitcoin miner into the GCC test suite, I think we can do that. <laughs> and we have the that run expensive tests. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very expensive. <laughs> yeah, well, if, if the Bitcoins go to the FSF, then probably it's okay. It's one minute of testing time for every test. Are sufficient to pay for the power that we cheat. No. <laughs> if it's not quite on CPUs, it's not, not efficient anymore. anymore. <laughs> well, there are some countries where we, which have electricity for free almost, like Iceland, and you can you can do bitcoins efficiently there, but otherwise, different discussion. <laughs> I mean, there, there's all, there are, of course, all the, uh, the constituents of, for instance, back Excel benchmark, right? so benchmark suite. There are, all these are 
are derived from physics calculation code, right? So, so probably one of these could be packaged, but but what for? Maybe Tön wants to package this better forecast. Well, we already found out years ago that our code doesn't work well with the graphics processors. There's really? No, not no. Okay. There's no part of it that really fits the model. Okay. Really? Interesting. Okay, so no better Too many questions. Yeah. Yeah, an indirect uh, addressing range. Okay, yeah. Okay, so no value for us then some physics, but, but I don't know, why, why should we package some, I don't know, quantum chromodynamics calculation packages? <laughs> <laughs> what would be the point? Must be something in the spec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah. In the spec? Well, um, there is spec open, but they have just very few parameters in there, so yeah. it's kind of useless for testing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it, it would be, the purpose would be to, to, to show the distribution, yeah. how the distribution would be working, right? And because uh, offload executable that targets HSA to make MEPTX and maybe G GCN directly actually needs to require certain tool chains for MEPTX. It's some cooler libraries called. Well, or OpenM has, has the examples as a separate directory, but unfortunately the examples are usually too, too simple yeah. for something to show the users. Uh, as as a whole whole solution of the central block. When you compile uh open and detailing uh in the X you you have to have the many body uh you have by the events and really give it the chain. Because it is all goes to zero. Okay. But the user needs to have installed basically to, to actually make use of it. Otherwise, it's a bit late. But probably most of our tests we which includes of offloading tests uh, aren't good as a benchmark for actually looking at the performance issues of what we actually do. So it would be nice to have some benchmarks. Yeah, well, there's spec Excel, spec open and feel. It's, it's all there. Spec open and is not about the flow of the trade. Okay, yeah. spec Excel. It is it's behind some... many years. Okay, yeah, but uh, spec Excel includes some. So it, uh, spec Excel has OpenCL, OpenMP, and OpenACC variants of mostly the same code, basically. Yeah. Same benchmarks. There's, there's... Yeah. I think Livermore have, has some same benchmark properties. They have some loops. Well, that's actually also a discussion or examination first that needs to happen. The difference between the OpenACC compilation model and the OpenMP model, where what both do is have gone to library functions even at code offloading time. But I guess nobody is aware of any performance reports comparing these. Well, it's, it's always possible we really use somebody spends time on, on it to inline something directly yeah. and, and do something smarter, sure. But I'm, I'm happy I managed to actually just to implement some of the features yeah. and, because there are so many features that I don't really have spare time to actually do performance work. Alexander, you did a lot of work on the Alexander Bridge did you do any performance measurements or comparisons? Um, yeah, but so uh, our implementation suffers a lot from there is not a lot of time. So when the accelerator is entering the integration, mm -hmm. it spends a really noticeable time just going through the, uh, the initial things uh, that we will develop. So some of it's our fault, some of it is uh, not really our fault because we did not anticipate that NVIDIA's model implementation is noticeably slow. <laughs> so there is a lot of speed up to the game there. Mm -hmm. 
once we get through that, um, uh, I think we make basic model for how we handle the duration reasonable. There are certainly some speed ups to be had by improving the backend or other factoring the PDFs as well. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I guess one, one of the important things will be how do we actually pass the parameters to the kernel that is by using the normal PUDA way of our PTX way to part, uh, passing parameters rather than what we use the structure. Yeah. And I or guess was, you have seen you, you have some the motor patches, then it, it would be nice to be conditionally so that it's only for PTX and other way. Which is that's better for not a launch. So, Chamillion just posted a new version of that and that's not specific. Yeah, it's, it would be nice to use it for the field. Yeah, now that just needs to be done. Yeah. <laughs> and for, for PTX offloading, there is also the thing that the new features which are written for 5.0 are just um, giving up in the uh, SMT cases. For features, I, I, I don't have time to implement for a PTS of release on the last private condition or other, other new features. I think so. or, or, or the you know, if in the, the runtime decision whether, whether to use multiple CMD lanes or, or a single one. Right now, the code basically just just forces those into if, if there is a runtime condition for 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 PTX. So your OpenMP work is focusing on the CPU, not the core side. Well, yeah. Well, well. If, if I find easily some way how to implement it for something else, I do, but. Otherwise, I, I just defer and uh, I, if, I if it's get implemented I've by somebody else, fine. You, if I have to implement it some, some day, it's fine. Sure. My other constraint is that I usually spend half a year on buckets in the compiler yeah. without being open and break. Well, well, often the bucket thing is also, <laughs> but <laughs> it depends on the method. I just see it here. Uh, C flex, C parallel language extension seems to be dead. That's that. Well, Mark, Mark and C. Yeah, I had just noticed that something like that came into existence a few years ago. Yeah, but it's like it's something very complex. Actually, it doesn't have anything to do with C flex, but, but still, the the modern C++ part of it is that not just the same, just different. Well, and for modern C++, C++ there is the parallel algorithms now, which, which we have TU backend, and I think in the works is the serial backend and OpenMP backend. But other other feature in, in, in the C one seems to yeah assume there is some runtime library somewhere that it does this mm. offloading or something similar and we have one already and so we can just use it if possible or if somebody has to write a new one. Anybody working on the Fortran parts of OpenMP5? Or 6? Well, uh, the problem with 
or attorneys that even four or five is not enough. Mm -hmm. Well, I implemented something and then I didn't have enough time. Ben was just it. basically asking around if you can, but it's a real And then there was working. FIFO and so. Sure. So, so, so there are, the most important, I think, is what doesn't worry because it's the structure mapping that you can do map calls. Mm -hmm. Parts of structure. There is just one recent one about about target exit data not breaking the making pointers or something. Well, we have many, many bugs with open for it. Yeah, but if the new features don't have open buttons, they should be thing that the user simply can't keep up with the development. That's most likely the case, but if you don't have the implementation, then they can start up, actually. And, and the other compilers are even more behind than we are. At least for most of the features. Okay. And it's strange that well next year there will be an E5 one and, and nobody nobody's even near actually having an implementation of five four. A lot of VM implemented a couple of small features, nothing. Or ICC has a couple of them and some of them very buggy. But what about the bottom? So the NVIDIA compiler, the Fortran compiler, I mean, they, they are actively working on open key on the end on the spec, and they are Fortran experts. They, they do have it, I might. So I would have expected that it's they. Well, Craig, Craig should have something. Yeah, Craig, Craig, and Fortran. The same group that is now rewriting everything. I believe actually Gray, uh, Gray, they opened the first plum that, that they abandoned and are now rewriting it from scratch. Yeah. Actually, there was a report in the last report on the Standardization Committee meeting about what, what, what their plans were. So it's simply an open document. Because I think everybody believed um, the documents of the standardization committee are not closed. Yeah, but uh, as I said, I'm just a little bit surprised that not even the Cray or Bottle group compilers have implemented or open It's a bit strange. Why, why are they even working on the Fortran parts of the standard then if they don't intend to actually implement it? <laughs> Okay, like, uh, the dot one release, which is not a bug fix release, but uh, adds a lot of new features. And the other thing I, I'm, I'm surprised is whenever I'm actually trying to implement some feature, I find many, many issues in the standard and report them. And usually, when somebody else is implementing it, they, they just don't ask questions and they yeah. just implement something. I don't know. Maybe they are just implementing the feature well without the corner cases, or I don't know. No, but the corner cases is something. Yeah, yeah. Just something, something, that case, something that something my impression as well. Yeah. Can't. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to the C++ standard, where the standard is much more natural. Because many, many more people actually look at it and implement or, or even try to implement it before actually getting it. For OpenMP, it's, it's the case that sometimes when coming with new features, people, uh, Intel or others, are actually, they, they implement some change in their compiler as an extension. Then they push it into the standard. But while being pushed into the standard, others say, no to this and change this and, and so on. 
so the feature changes so much from what they have implemented, and then nobody tries to implement it again. It's a new one, yeah, exactly. Well, it was also a point in the Fortran community too when I looked there. But, but as soon as, as the, the other members of the committee got the impression that Cray wanted to push something that they had in their compiler, was immediately <laughs> push it. Or change it. I'm sure it was. <laughs> Okay, anything else?